Hey guys, this is the second part of the uh, Unit 3 Worksheet 2 video. Um, I realized as I was going through number nine, something wasn't working and that's because I typed this wrong. So if you can do me a favor really quickly, if you can change this number nine to cosine of theta, that's gonna make this work problem work a lot nicer. So um, let's go through this. One thing when I was going through number nine earlier, um, the thing was wrong, but I'm going through the process and I'm realizing it halfway through that things aren't working. And I think it's a good thing to remind you guys sometimes, especially when we're verifying identities, sometimes you're gonna go through and the process that you chose to go through just isn't gonna work. And so sometimes rather than try to fix what you've done, it's best to step back and start over from scratch. So that's just something I wanna remind you, especially with verifying. Sometimes the method we pick isn't gonna work well, we wanna just start over. So let's do number nine now. Um, when I went through it last time, the first thing I thought to do was to do a common denominator. Um, and that, even if I had done that before, it still would have worked out a little messy. So this time I'm gonna try changing everything into sine into cosine first. And sometimes knowing what to do first is hard. It's not always clear. So sometimes you try something and it either works or it doesn't work. Um, tangent is the same as sine of theta over cosine theta. And I'm just gonna move this over here a little bit. Okay, so now I'm gonna try getting a common denominator because at this point there's no Pythagorean identities. Um, I can't really factor. So I'm gonna multiply this side by one plus sine over one plus sine theta. And I'm gonna multiply this side by cosine theta times cosine theta. So when I do that on this side, I'm gonna get a cosine squared theta over a cosine theta, one plus sine theta, plus on this side, I'm gonna have a sine theta times one plus sine theta over a cosine theta, one plus sine theta. Okay, well now I can combine things. As I combine in the numerator, I'm also gonna distribute so that's gonna give me a, uh, when I distribute this, I'm gonna get a sine theta and a sine squared theta. And then the denominator, I have my cosine theta, one plus sine theta, okay? So now I wanna see if I can find anything helpful. I'm noticing that I have this uh, cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta. Well, that has a value of one, right? So I'm gonna cross these out. Instead, I'm gonna put a plus one because now my numerator is sine plus one over cosine theta, one plus sine theta. Well, other than being in the wrong order, this numerator is the same as this denominator right there. So all I have left is a one over cosine theta, which can be rewritten as secant theta. Okay, let's do one more. Again, if you feel good, see if you can do one by yourself, but we'll definitely be practicing this a lot more next class. And then we'll have our first quiz on it two classes from now. Okay, well, when I look at this, my first instinct to see if I have a Pythagorean identity, and I notice that I don't because it should be one plus tangent or one plus cosine. So let's see if we can come up with something else to do. I'm gonna try turning everything into sines and cosines and seeing if that helps. So I'm gonna have a one over, and I'm gonna give myself lots of room, one minus sine squared theta over cosine squared theta plus one over one minus cosine squared theta over sine squared theta. Okay, well let's see if we can get a common denominator here. So I'm gonna turn this into a cosine squared theta over cosine squared theta. This is gonna become a sine over sine. Okay, so let's see if we can rewrite this. I'm gonna have a one over cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta. 
I'm gonna make sure this is the biggest fraction bar. Notice I accidentally made a mistake there. That should be a minus sign. So I'm just combining terms right now. Okay. Notice that these are my denominators. Um, so one of the things that I can do is I can just, uh, so <laughs> I have one divided by this fraction, which is the same as one times the reciprocal of this fraction. So I'm gonna flip this. I'm gonna have a cosine squared theta over cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta plus, okay, notice I have one divided by this fraction, so it's the same as one times the reciprocal of that fraction. Now, while I'm doing this, I'm noticing that this denominator here, this piece here, is really, really similar to this piece here. The only difference is the positive is in the front of the sign, the negative goes with the cosine. So I'm gonna factor out a negative so that I have this cos squared here is positive and this sine squared here is negative. Let me get my sticky note so I can keep working. Okay, this negative here, I'm gonna move to the numerator. So what I really have is this minus this over this. What do you notice about the numerator and the denominator? They're equal. So that's gonna give me one equals one. So that one was a little bit of a doozy and I know I'm getting a little sleepy, so sorry if I didn't talk through that one super well. I would say that on this paper, the first couple were pretty straightforward, so I would make sure you feel good about some of the ones at the top. We're going to practice this more a lot next class, but hopefully by seeing me do a couple of these is making it look a little more familiar, um, and then we'll practice this next time. Don't forget that we have a memory quiz on the first 11 identities, and we'll take that at the beginning of class. Um, you will not have a homework check on worksheet two. Okay, I'll see you guys soon.